to understand something, you have to understand how it works. So it's always based on your empathy or you have to understand yourself to understand what's happening around you. So it's always human centric stories told with the use of machines around them. My work is not about technology. It's about you facing a mirror of yourself, like for instance, a robot. It's not about the fact that it's faster, stronger. It's about the fact that this thing is actually showing you your own nature. I'm using robotics, but for the arts. So the whole idea is to create context and situation, like theatrical setups where you involve with a robot. When I make a robot, I never see it as an engineering or a scientific, let's say, undertaking to start with. It's not an engineering problem, it's a societal problem that I'm dealing with. I, so I want people to have the discussion. With the blind robot, I was interested in not intelligence, but competence. I made a robot that basically touches people and, you know, uh, touches their face and so forth. Instead of saying that this robot is just a sensor that will touch you and it's measuring your heartbeat and at the end of a few minutes it tells me if I have like a cancer or something. And if uh, this robot is blind and it wants to touch you, I made a test with people, the, these two different scenarios, and people prefer to be touched by the blind robot because you create a situation of empathy and you understand why the robot wants to touch you. He's afflicted, you, there's different relation to it. So the idea is like I created a whole competence. I created AI in this robot just by giving it a name. And that's what theater does. It's all about experience, singular experiences. So for instance, if I ask you, have you ever been touched by a robot? How does it feel to be touched by a robot? You, you have no clue. The first time you did something, your, your first kiss, for instance, uh, how does it feel? You didn't know what it felt before. Then after, you know. So Blind Robot is all about expectation. You accept to play the game. It's all an invented scenario, but the empathy is what counts. So I know Louis-Philippe because we were both studying our PhDs together. We were studying on an art and science PhD program that was offered by the University of Zurich uh, and the University of Plymouth in the UK. One of the really interesting roles that artists can play is to almost uh, cause people to examine their own feelings about what it means to live in a world where robots are our friends, where robots might even be members of our family, where robots are certainly part of our workplace. So I think exactly Examining those issues, you know, kind of using the work of uh, incredible artists like Louis Philippe to get closer to those issues perhaps helps us kind of navigate uh, this uncertain future that we're heading towards. Do robots need artists? Uh, robots do need humans. They need them for all kinds of maintenance. They need energy. They need to be assembled. They cannot exist on their own at this stage. Does the development of robotics needs artists, that's a very different question. And I, and I would say for sure, yes, because we can provide alternate scenarios that are developed, let's say, in the commercial field or in the engineering field or scientific field. We have a very different concern. We are more about empathy. We're more about storytelling. We're more about, let's say, human relations at a very different level. That's what artists can provide. Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology.